I always say, when you want to do something in life, no matter where you come from, you can do it. I am Patrice Evra. Some people know me for playing football for Manchester United and France. Other people know me as Mr. I love this game! I've been invited to take part in Mandela Day. Nelson Mandela is a global icon. He spent his entire life fighting for freedom, equality and justice and brought an end to apartheid in South Africa. Every year on Nelson Mandela's birthday, July the 18th, people in South Africa take part in an act of service in their community inspired by his legacy. My grandfather was the architect behind Mandela Day. It's really about getting involved, uh, getting dirty, put on your gumboots, put on some gloves, and going out there. This year, myself and five other celebrities will be taking Mandela Day global. By joining forces with the Nelson Mandela Foundation and undertaking our own act of service in communities across the world. Kelvin, nice to meet you. I love this game, man. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Happiness, can we go? Yep. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here, man. I am Dabo Mandela, the grandson of Nelson Mandela. Oh, I remember this one. <laughs> England versus South Africa. I think they beat us 2-0, if I'm not mistaken, that day. My grandfather loved sports because he felt that sports could bring people together in a way that little else can. When in prison on Robben Island, Mandela used to listen to football on the radio and said he was the only joy for prisoners. After his release, he was instrumental in securing the 2010 World Cup in South Africa. Sport has the power to inspire and unite people. Like me, many young kids dream of becoming a professional footballer. The huge salaries on offer seems like a way out of a tough start in life. One route to the Premier League is through academies set up by clubs to support the best young talent with the hope of one day getting them into the first team. But each year, over 11,000 of these young players are released from the academies with no backup plan. So for my act of service, I am off to visit one of London's semi-pro football teams who are giving players a second chance at the game. I pull in one of YouTube top football creators, Jeremy Lynch. He's going to be helping me surprise the club with a very exciting gift and we will be giving the team the game of their lives. So whoever wins, they get to play non-bibs. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. What is yeah, the number, yeah. guys? Did he do the double? Non-bibs. Non <laughs> non <-bibs. laughs> Acne Week Football Club was started in 2015 by Bobby Kasanga. It is the first ever semi-professional club in Acne, which, in 2021, had the highest knife crime rate of all London boroughs. Bobby's original mission was to help kids off the street and out of the clutches of gang crime. But the club has now also become home to kids who have been released from academies, giving them another shot at the game. I met uh, Mandela when with Manchester United, we went to South Africa. When you meet someone like Nelson Mandela, you meet someone to allow you to be free. For me, the, the, the Mandela Day is like being kind. Make sure like you're taking care of other people. And I, I just it's just an honor for myself to, to be here. Hey! <laughs> Mr. Ebra. Neil, Mas, how are you? You good? I'm very good. Yourself? I'm good, thank you. Man. Bobby, how okay. are you? You good? I'm uh, very good. <laughs> Guys! Oh, boys, come in! Let's go, jog in, jog in, jog in, jog in, jog in! Drums, jog in, silent, jog in! How are you guys? You good? What's your name? Patrick. Patrick? Yeah, bien. How are you? More. More? Yeah. Okay, I want more. Oh, <laughs> Kelvin, nice to meet you, Kelvin. I love this game, man. All right, well, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, Patrice? <laughs> Ça va la forme? It's French, we even have French people. No, oh, guys, seriously, first of all, uh, thank you for, for being here. And uh, for me, today is, is special. You know, I feel really connected and related. Like, when I come here, it just reminds me of my childhood. I always say, when you want to do something in life, no matter where you come from, you can do it. I did a trial in Paris Saint-Germain when I was young. You know what the coach said to me? He said, you're too small. And also because you're from the street, maybe you're going to steal in the dressing room. People will, will tell you you can't make it. They will try to, you know, to project their own failure on you. And I want you to believe in yourself. Against your position, Dad. 
it's nice to be here. I feel oh, good. Thank you for coming. I, I feel home. <laughs> and uh, yeah, tell me a little bit about why you start that idea. I, I used to be a very decent footballer. Um, I wanted to make it as everyone's ambition is. And I just got caught up in the wrong crowd. So yeah. by getting caught up in the wrong crowd, I'm not going to football no more. I found the streets was an easy, quick way to make money. And then, and then before I knew it, prison. Yeah, football was my dream. Football was my ambition. That's all I wanted to do. I was one of the best footballers in the area. I know everyone always says these things, but it's absolutely true. Growing up in Peckham, uh, grew up in a tough estate uh, called the Gloucester Estate. But when you're growing up in that area like that, you get kind of get caught up in the wrong crowd and ended up uh, joining the gangs. And then before I knew it, my criminality sort of increased to um, a point which led me to be incarcerated. So I spent um, eight years of my life in prison. A lot of young people inside that really inspired me um, to start the football club because you see a lot of young players with so talented. You're like, whoa, you are so good at football. Why didn't you make it? And they're like, I didn't know where to go. I didn't have no options. And that's what kind of inspired me to say, you know what, let me start a semi-professional football team to sort of give young players that platform and not end up like me. When I came out of prison, I said, you know what, I'm going to start my own team. It's been a long graft. It's about giving all these young players just a platform and a chance. A lot of them, if we're realistic, they're not going to go and make it as a professional footballer. Mm -hmm. We know that. There's 60 million people in the UK, only 4,000 professional footballers. Yeah. So we told them, what's your plan B? What's your plan C? So if a young man says he's got an interest in something else, we'll contact companies and say, look, this young man's interested in your service. Can he come and do some work over there? So <laughs> okay, but you know you are an angel for them. We're trying. A study found out 55% of players were suffering high levels of psychological distress 21 days after being released from an academy. Acne Week aim to help the 230 players they see on a weekly basis by offering mentoring programs and educational workshops. What do you think stops us from talking about mental health amongst like our friends? Some coaches, like, obviously men have to be like the more dominant, like alpha male. Like you have to, obviously, whatever you're feeling, you have to like keep it in yourself. Like. And all adult members do two hours volunteering in the local community, giving them skills and something to believe in. So for Nelson Mandela, sport was another one of those powerful tools of social transformation because when it comes to sport, it is about, you know, skill, it's about dexterity. He understood the power of endurance, of perseverance, and of an activity that really forces you to push yourself to the limit. Oh, ready. Wow. Oh. <laughs> It's a lot about sacrifice, determination. Um, and then when you're playing the game, I mean, a lot of times you'll feel physical exhaustion, mental exhaustion. It's about overcoming your, your physical and, and using your thoughts to, to power you. So I born in Senegal, uh, in Dakar. And after one year uh, with our family, we moved in Paris. And I grew up in a banlieue called uh, Les Ulysses. Was amazing, but was also tough. Like I used to beg money in front of shop to buy a, a little sandwich called kebab. I don't have any reason why I love football so much. I think it's just like when I was a child, when someone was giving me a ball, I was just like happy. To be honest, football saved my life. It was my hope. It was uh, my reason of living. And when you grow up in the street, I work on my skill, I work on my determination, uh, being passionate about life, and never give up. That's why who I am right now. That's why when I talk to, to kids where they're from the street, I'm like, you know, you're not different, and you can make it. My grandfather once said, do not judge me by my successes, but judge me by the amount of times I fell down and got up again. Captain of the team, Dante, came to Acne Week two years ago after being released from East London Professional Football Club, Leighton Orient. So what I've got here are just some photos of me when I was at Leighton Orient. This was like my first year into the club, so I was excited, I was young, and I just wanted to play football, really. When I was about 10, 11, that's when I got my first contract at an academy, which was Leighton Orient. And yeah, being released was probably one of the toughest things because I was there for six, seven years. 
And Dante, what, what did you feel like? What's your emotion when you feel like they didn't they release you? You feel like an injustice or you think like it was the right decision? For me, it was kind of a shock because I did think I was going to get a contract. Oh. But, um, Massive disappointment. Yeah, it was just, I was disappointed. It hit my confidence. I didn't really want to play football anymore, if I'll be totally honest. All my friends knew I was getting a decision. And so I had to go to school the next day. And for me, that was difficult to face my friends to tell them, oh, I didn't get a contract anymore because all my friends at school looked up to me as like the best in the school. And mm. that was something that was special to me. And it when I, you. yeah, it hurt me and it was kind of embarrassing for yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. So for me, it was kind of a thing where I, for a few months, I was just, I was by myself in school. I didn't really talk to anyone about it and I kind of kept it inside. So, so Dante, what, uh, you know, Acne Week like represent for you? So Hackney Week's been very good to me and I feel like I have improved as a, as a player and as a young adult. Um, I live with my mum, she's a single parent. Mm. So being the oldest sibling, um, it kind of leaves me with that like man, manly responsibility to look after my siblings when she's not about it. Mm. Like, I also work, so I just come from a night shift, finish at 6 a.m. this morning and then came straight here. Yes, yeah, there, there, there'll be times like match days on a Saturday where I'll finish at 6 a.m., I'll go home and sleep for three hours, wake up and then make my way to the game. And that's why I appreciate Bobby and the rest of the coaching staff because they still have the faith in me to perform on a, on a match day. Um, they're always supporting me, asking me if, like, if I need another job and I can't thank them enough, really. They've been, they've been great towards me. But I feel also you won't let them down and uh, you're going to even like, give better, like, the best of you. No, wow. I have, I have nothing to say. You impressed me. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank it was you. nice. It was thank nice, Dante. You. One thing adding to Dante's lack of sleep is how far he has to travel for their games. Acne is the only borough in London without a stadium, which meets the right requirements to play the semi-pro game. So Acne Week have been forced to ground share with another team outside of London. But where is your home training ground? Like when you play games, like where? Well, uh, well this is where we train. <laughs> Our home ground is out in Whitton, 40 miles away from here. 40 miles away? Yeah. yeah. Got all these young players having to travel home and away for every single game. And then um, not having enough cars, because not some we've got so much young players, not everybody drives. Some players have to get on the train. Travelling costs us a lot of money um, throughout the season. Luckily for them, my friend Jeremy Lynch is around the corner with a big surprise. Yeah. Jeremy is a football freestyler, one of YouTube's biggest stars, with his channel boasting over 5 million subscribers. He was released after a trial at Arsenal, but quickly found himself an exciting plan B. So when I was told that I wasn't going to be signed to Arsenal and they weren't going to keep me on, just like any youngster, it's devastating. So I started doing the football freestyling and then really quickly started to get amazing opportunities through doing the football tricks. So filming with Cristiano Ronaldo, being in a film, I went on Britain's Got Talent. So yeah, I mean, things have gone relatively well for me and I'm very grateful. Now that I'm in a position where I can give back, I've got something for you. Yeah? Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, we're, we're intrigued. Do you like surprise? We're yeah, 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 yeah. Do, you, do you believe in, uh, in Santa? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, let's go. Let's see, let's see. For our main act of service on Mandela Day, Jeremy and I come up with a plan to give Acne Week something that could really make a difference to their lives. Hey! Bro, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you too. But guys, by the way, I'm jealous, huh? Because when I arrived, everyone was like... <laughs> oh, hey, why? That was the first surprise, Mr. Jeremy Lynch. How are you, sir? But the big surprise is this is yours. Come on. That's what I'm talking about, so, you know, 40 miles. That's why I say, Lau, it's going to help you a lot. And I hope you, you enjoy the surprise. Um, are you guys happy with, with the van? Is it gonna is it gonna help? Because we know you've been travelling no, a lot to get it. Saves us for journey down the road. What usually happens? We have to find out how many drivers do we have on a day. Yeah, There's not yeah. enough drivers, and some yeah, people have to catch a train. Yeah. And yeah. 
and for us it's about camaraderie so if everyone can be on a journey together yeah traveling together it makes it easier as well and makes it people are late and, and this is yeah, 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 yeah. there is one last i say surprise it's kind of like a team thing that we're, we're going to do so all of us yeah. together if you're if you're up for it yeah, yeah sure well, you don't even know what we're going to do and you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for final mandela day surprise jeremy and i will be captaining our own acne week teams to thank them for their hospitality rock paper scissors for the bibs yeah. ready yeah. rock paper scissors yeah. oh. and i was late as well <laughs> I had such a great time, so I'm asking everyone to go out into their communities and take part in their own act of service, big or small. So get out there and get involved. Ultimately, we win together, we lose together. But we still have another day where we can train and where we can become better. That is the beauty and the magic of coming together and playing as a team, as a family, as a community.